Hello, welcome to a presentation about the Specialist Education Services, SES for short, SES. My name is Izzy Connell and I am the head teacher of the Specialist Education Services within the Inclusion Service at Suffolk County Council. Thank you very much for listening today. We're going to talk you through the different service areas and the changes that have been made to the specialist education services over the last few months, ready for the 1st of September 2021 to work with um, our schools, education settings um, to support children and young people with special educational needs aged 0 to 25. This slide shows our offer from September 2021. There will be five new teams who offer support and advice to education settings. The five teams are listed in red, cognition and learning, communication and interaction, social, emotional and mental health, physical sensory, and a new team of whole school inclusion. The first four teams that you can see there are the four areas of need as described in the SEND Code of Practice. Cognition and learning, the service will support a range of learning needs, including children with moderate learning difficulties and specific learning difficulties, dyslexia, dyscalculia and a range of other specific learning difficulties. The cognition and learning team will consist of specialist teachers. Currently, we commission a service through our SENDAT colleagues. That service that we commission is coming and joining us in-house in Suffolk County Council from the 1st of September, and that team will form our new cognition and learning team. In addition, we already have our dyslexia outreach team, known as DOT, that team will also, they remain the same, they will also be part of the cognition and learning strand. Communication and interaction will be for children and young people experiencing difficulties with speech and language and or social communication or interaction. So it's important to remember that our, special, uh, our specialist service for children with speech, language and communication needs will now be part of the communication and interaction strand. Social, emotional and mental health will support children and young people with a wide range of SEMH difficulties. The physical sensory team will support children and young people with a clinically diagnosed sensory loss and or physical or medical needs. With that team, it's really important to remember that this is children with a sensory loss. This is not children who have sensory processing difficulties or sensory integration difficulties. Those children would be seen as part of the communication and interaction team, but the physical sensory team is for those children who have been clinically diagnosed with a sensory loss, perhaps a hearing impairment, a visual impairment or dual sensory loss. The whole school inclusion team is a brand new team and we're really pleased to be able to offer this to schools and settings and to children and young people. This new team will support whole school practice around SEND and inclusion. There will be a team of specialist teachers who work to support staff in schools, SENCOs, teachers, teaching assistants and school leaders around SEND policy and putting SEND policy into practice. There will be an additional team of inclusion practitioners who work with children and young people directly, with staff in schools directly and with families to support those vulnerable children for whom education is proving um, difficult at the time. So those will be children who need very bespoke support to engage in school, to participate in school and to make progress. They are the five teams from September who will form the Specialist Education Services. There is a highlighted sentence at the bottom which is really important. No formal diagnosis or EHCP education and healthcare plan is needed to access any of those service, services. 
The education setting, however, must have the consent of the parent or the carer to make a referral and they must discuss the referral with you. You need to be a very important part of the outcomes that are shared when our services become involved with children within the school. I'd like to share with you why we have made some changes to the specialist education services. Why have we decided to call them something different um, and structure them differently? One of the reasons we've done this is so that the services really clearly reflect and articulate the four areas of need within the SEND code of practice, cognition and learning, communication and interaction, SEMH and physical sensory. Hopefully that's easier to understand, easier to navigate and easier to recognise which service is needed for, um, to, to support a child or young person. We also wanted to have a broader offer across all of the four areas of need, especially cognition and learning. I said earlier that we commission a service through SENDAT for cognition and learning. We wanted that service to be part of the Suffolk County Council in-house offer. So we also wanted to broaden the offer to children from zero to 25. Some of our services do work with babies right up to the age of 25 but some of our services start at four and finish at 16. We are really keen to work with our colleagues in the early years team at Suffolk County Council to support the transition of children from their preschool setting into reception class in school. That's a big transition for a lot of children and we would like to be part of their journey from day one as arriving in school in their reception class. Equally for post 16, we don't want there to be a cliff edge at the age of 16. We want to support the transition of the children and young people that we've worked with throughout key stages three and four into wherever their post 16 setting might be and support our colleagues in post 16 settings to meet the needs of their learners with SEND. Therefore, the services will work with children and young people aged zero to 25 in all education settings. And as I've said at the bottom, this is particularly important to support transition at the various transition points that a child or a young person experiences and moving into adulthood. Some more reasons why we've made some changes. We were very keen to have a team, the whole school inclusion team, to support whole school approaches to SEND. This is really important. We need specialist teachers who can provide support to individual children and young people, but equally, just as important, we need to enable and empower um, workforces in schools and settings to meet the needs of learners with SEND. Therefore, we wanted to have a team who work to support SENCOs and school leaders in whole school policy and practice around SEND. Equally, the inclusion practitioners, part of that new whole school inclusion team, will offer support where it's identified that more bespoke support is needed for a learner, working directly to support the triangle, which is the child or the young person, the family and the school or the setting, to ensure joined up communication and a joined up and multi-agency approach to those children who are most vulnerable to um, non-engagement or non-participation in school. We're changing the way our referral system works from September. We want there to be a single point of access into our specialist education services. This means that one referral from a school or education setting into the specialist education services will make sure that the right service is involved at the right time and that that service or services will work where appropriate with multi-agency partners in health and social care. So it will no longer be necessary for a school or an education setting to refer into different services at different times. They will have a single point of access, a weekly referral panel to consider all the referrals, and then there will be a decision about which service or services need to be involved around that child or young person. Where one service starts to work with a child in a school, 
It may be that that one specialist teacher decides another service needs to be involved and another area of specialism. Children very rarely have one area of need, quite often they have multi-layered difficulties. This will mean that one team will take the lead and coordinate the support from other services. Again, it's that single point of access. The school will do one referral into our services and the right service or services will support when needed. As families, what are the key changes that you will notice? You will notice a change in names of the services. So there will now be the four specialist teams, cognition and learning, communication and interaction, SEMH and physical sensory, and the fifth team, the whole school inclusion team. The county inclusion support service known as SIS will now be the teams for communication and interaction and social, emotional and mental health, SEMH. A brand new team of inclusion practitioners will provide bespoke support for vulnerable learners. A team of whole school inclusion specialist teachers will be available to support the leadership of SEND and whole school approaches. And there won't be any longer geographical teams. Currently, many of our services, not all, but some of our services are split into geographical teams working in the north, the south or the west. We want each service to be county wide. We want the teacher that's best suited to support a child to be part of that child's send journey, regardless of where the child is at school or regardless of where that teacher works. We also know that referral numbers fluctuate very regularly between those different geographical areas. We therefore need to have complete flexibility to meet the need where it is required without being restricted by geography. Some other changes that you will notice. The SENDAT outreach team that I mentioned we currently commission through the SENDAT, which is a big academy trust, will become the new Suffolk County Council Cognition and Learning Service. Within that cognition and learning service also sits our dyslexia outreach team for children with specific learning difficulties. The second bullet point on this team tells you that the dyslexia outreach team will now be called the specific learning difficulties team. We've changed the name to reflect the language of the code of practice, but also to reflect the wider ranging expertise of the team and therefore the offer of their support. We're very fortunate in Suffolk to have a team of very skilled, highly qualified teachers who support children with dyslexia, but who can also support children with dyscalculia and other specific learning difficulties. The previously named sensory and communication service will now be the physical sensory service. This is the service for children with physical medical needs or children with that clinically diagnosed sensory loss hearing impairment, visual impairment, or dual sensory loss. And again, instead of referring into the different services, one at a time, schools can now refer into CESS and receive cross-team or cross-service coordinated support appropriate to, need, to the needs of the school or the needs of the child or young person, without the need to keep referring into different services one at a time. Again, it's really important to remember, it is not necessary to have an education, health or care plan or a diagnosis to access our services. This slide just gives you a little bit more detail about our new SEMH service. Our SEMH service will be led by Sally Blackman and it will support children and young people who um, experience a wide range of social and emotional difficulties. And we have given some examples on this, slides, on this slide. We want to support schools to better understand the needs of children and young people with SEMH. And we do this, as it says, by observing and talking to schools, families and pupils themselves. Remember that every referral into our services must come with your permission. We support schools to make reasonable adjustments to meet the children or young person's needs. We advise on strategies and intervention. 
We do encourage families to be involved in making and reviewing the inclusion plan that we set up with the school. And just a myth buster, we do accept referrals for children who are not attending school, but they must be on the role of a school. It's just really important to remember as well that we are teachers. Our service consists of specialist teachers. We're not therapists, we're not psychologists. That means that although we will work in a multi-agency way and we can signpost a different support, we might not always be the right service. It's really important to point out that our services work to empower and enable schools to meet the needs of their learners. That's why we employ teachers in our services to inform that classroom practice in school every day. The new communication and interaction service will also consist of specialist teachers who will again work with the school staff, SENCO, teachers, support staff, head teachers, whoever is needed to again to empower and enable the school to work with those learners with communication and interaction needs, offering support, advice and guidance around perhaps social rules, emotional regulation and pupils with ASC, autistic spectrum condition. Support will be very much personalised based on the pupils or the child and young person's needs, from general advice to more bespoke support for children on caseload. We offer training for staff. Some of our work is face to face and some of our work is virtual. Where we want to meet with school staff, for example, perhaps at the end of a school day, we found engagement virtually is very successful. The level of support will always be based on the child or young person's needs. And again, a diagnosis is not needed. As part of the communication and interaction strand, as I mentioned earlier, is our outreach team for children with speech, language and communication needs. Again, it's important to remember that our service consists of specialist teachers who work with schools to inform the practice in the school. We are not the team that carry out individual speech and language therapy for individual children. That is the NHS service for speech and language therapy. But our service work as an outreach team to support those children with SLCN needs in mainstream schools and in all education settings. The speech, language and communication outreach team has been in place since September 2020. It's quite a new team. And there's just four bullet points here to say what this team does. Do take a second just to read this slide. Again, do remember that if we are working with a child with speech, language and communication difficulties and we recognise perhaps that another service from the specialist education service could also offer some support, we will work together coordinating and harmonising the support from across our services. These are some interesting statistics around children with speech, language and communication needs. And it's interesting to read that this is now the most common type of need at primary school. Ten percent of children have a long term speech and language and communication needs. It's just some statistics there again for you to read. Because of these statistics, we are very pleased that we will continue to grow our SLCN outreach team working with all settings. And these are some of the ways in which the team supports schools. Do take a second to read this slide.
This is how our speech, language and communication needs outreach team can offer support to parents. Because of the changes that we are making to the specialist education services, we are currently updating our pages on the local offer to reflect how we work with children and young people and families across all of the services. The top bullet point is really important. On the new local offer pages will be all of our contact details. We are very happy to speak to parents and to families at any point to offer our support. Please do note the training that is available from our Speech, Language and Communication Needs Outreach team. We offer Elkland training for parents, we offer Makaton training, and we regularly do um, updates through coffee mornings or coffee evenings with our Sendias colleagues. From September, all of our services will continue to work very closely with our colleagues in Sendias to offer updates information and how children can be supported at home with their learning. The head of service for the speech, language and communication needs team is Caroline Wells and they are our four specialist teachers currently. I'm happy to say we also have a fifth teacher joining us very soon in this service. On this slide, which I hope you will revisit when you have some time, are some useful links to supporting children with speech, language and communication needs. Do have a look, there's lots of really good resources there, not just for schools but for families too. A little bit more about our whole school inclusion service. This is our brand new service to support whole school practice. We'll support schools and education settings around inclusion for all children and young people. And we are all about promoting engagement in education and achievement. And we use the word achievement rather than attainment because children achieve in different ways. We want to support schools with their provision planning for children and young people with additional needs, including those children and young people with an EHCP. Um, uh, an education, health and care plan, an EHCP, but also those children without. We want to work with other teams, such as our colleagues in education and learning, to support and share strong, inclusive practice, high quality teaching, high quality differentiated teaching in schools. The new inclusion practitioner team that I mentioned earlier these are six colleagues who will work with children where schools have perhaps already supported through the graduated cycle of assess, plan, do, review and have already sought specialist advice. Remember, assess, plan, do, review is something that happens in school. It's called the graduated approach. It's written in the code of practice and it's the journey that schools go on with their children and young people from identification of need through to planning interventions, implementing interventions and reviewing the impact of those interventions. Sometimes there'll be children where schools have already supported through this approach and they have already engaged with our services and the school or the setting still feel that this child or young person needs something very different and very bespoke. Our inclusion practitioner team will help draw together all the information and support the next steps for that child or young person jointly with the school and the setting. We want to support children and young people to engage and participate, perhaps for those children most vulnerable to not engaging and not participating. We therefore liaise with teams such as the Youth Justice Team, Early Help and our Alternative Tuition Service. We will work with families of children that have been permanently exclude, excluded to support transition into the new setting so that that transition can be successful. And crucially, we will coordinate the right multi-agency approach. So we have worked um, over the last couple of years with our multi-agency assessment programme, the MAP team, 
the multi-agency approach will remain and our specialist services and our whole school inclusion service, including our inclusion practitioners, will work together to support those children who reach stage three of our graduated response where they are most vulnerable, where assess, plan, do, review has been, um, has happened in school, where other services are involved and have been involved, but we still need something different for these children and young people. The multi-agency approach, we will work with our partners in health and social care with our inclusion practitioners to support next steps for those most vulnerable learners. Our alternative tuition service in Suffolk County Council supports children who can't attend school due to medical or health needs, or they may have been permanently excluded, or they may be awaiting specialist placement. From September, our virtual offer for this service will continue where it is most effective in meeting the needs of our children and young people. Our children receive a blended offer of virtual and face-to-face. -face. For some children, the virtual offer has been very successful in helping them to engage. Some children prefer the face-to-face -face offer. Each offer is bespoke according to the needs of the children and young person. We are extending our offer in the alternative uh, tuition service to include some PSHE and some information, advice and guidance around careers and career development. We're now offering group lessons online to broaden interaction and socialisation for those children currently not attending school. Again, that's been a real benefit of the virtual offer. We've been able to bring groups of young people together and work with them online in a group. Our new specific learning difficulty service was formerly known as the Dyslexia Outreach Team. And there's just some information on this slide about how the specific learning difficulty service works. Again, we work with, in partnership with schools and with families to improve outcomes for children and young people who have severe and persistent difficulties with literacy. We know there is a, uh, a very definite link between um, children's ability to uh, read and write and their future achievement and future development. We want to also support children and young people who have difficulties with numeracy, those who may have dyscalculia. Again, no diagnosis is needed of dyslexia or dyscalculia or any other specific learning difficulty to access this service. We continue to provide newsletters on the local offer on strategies for home learning. And there's a link there to where those can be found. We're excited to be able to offer workshops to families during the Dyslexia Awareness Week. This is a national awareness week which begins on the 4th of October 2021. Please do look out for our free workshops and come and join us. Moving now to the teams around physical sensory needs. We have a service called the Specialist Learning Support Assistance. The overarching service lead, head of service for sensory and physical needs is Kim Hodge. But our leads for the specialist learning support assistants are registered paediatric nurses, Kate Wood and Natalie Bowerman. This is a small service funded between our inclusion service and the NHS and the education setting to support those children and young people who have very complex medical needs. We support those children and young people to access and receive their education. The specialist learning support assistants are individually matched to each child or young person to support their medical needs and their medical care so that they can access education. It's important to note this service is supported by Ipswich and East Suffolk CCG and West Suffolk CCG. This service is not available in the Lower Stofton Waveney area. The care coordinators, Kate and Natalie, manage the team and support training and competency of all the staff. They write the school health care plans, 
following very strict protocols and symptom management plans. In order to access the service, children and young people have to meet continuing health care. They also have to be reliant upon technology and require constant supervision by an appropriately trained adult to meet their medical needs. The service work with children aged two and a half to 19 in all settings. That's mainstream and specialist settings. Also part of the physical sensory service are services for deaf children and young people. And our lead for this service is Andrea Carroll. This service works with babies through to 25 year olds and babies are referred through the NHS screening program for newborn babies. We support children and young people with a diagnosis of a long term hearing loss. And the team includes teachers of the deaf, qualified teachers of the deaf, sensory support practitioners and a British Sign Language tutor. And there's just some information there about the support that we provide. It includes the loan of specialist equipment, training in deaf awareness and meeting the needs of deaf learners, and advice and support to develop listening, communication and language. Also support for children and young people and their families to learn BSL, British Sign Language. In addition to our outreach teams and our uh, British Sign Language tutor, and our equipment, uh, our hearing impaired technician, we also have five specialist resources in Suffolk, resource bases for deaf children or young people. These are based in some of our schools around Suffolk. Services for children with visual impairment um, and also uh, services for children with dual sensory loss or multi-sensory loss. The lead for these services is Jonathan Bolt, and we support children and young people who have a diagnosed visual or multisensory impairment, again, from birth to 25 in our preschool settings and in education settings. The specialist teachers provide assessment, um, advice on the curriculum and, and access to the curriculum through technology and the teaching of Braille. Alongside our specialist teachers are a team of sensory support practitioners who provide additional one-to-one -one support for children and young people in their setting. This these teams also provide training on sensory loss, practical visual access, adapting a learning environment to increase independence. And we provide training to families, schools, to Suffolk County Council agencies and to the voluntary um, sector. Our referrals for the service come from ophthalmology or via the inclusion service referral form. An educational health care plan is not required to access these services and additional information is available on the local offer. I'm going to finish with a slide with some frequently asked questions. I mentioned earlier that we are redesigning our pages on the local offer around all of the services you've heard about and all of the services you've heard about are called the specialist education services. We would like to have a, uh, a link on our pages to some frequently asked questions from parents. And these are just a few questions that families have recently asked us that I thought it would be useful to talk about. So can a parent contact the specialist education services directly themselves? The answer to that question is yes, you, con you can contact our specialist education services as a parent or a carer. However, the referrals do come from schools or settings or from health teams. I've mentioned ophthalmology and audiology, for example. So parents can't make referrals directly, but they can contact our services directly. Our contact details are available on the local offer and we are very happy to provide support. Equally, I would wish to reiterate that any referral into our services requires your permission and any inclusion plan or um, plan that our services have to work with your child we very much encourage the family to be involved in sharing the aims and the outcomes of our service involvement. 
The second question is parents have asked us is when can a referral be made? Is there a deadline? There are no deadlines for referrals. We have a rolling program of referrals into all of our services. We have a weekly panel that will sit and look at referrals every week, but equally referrals that come in during the week are considered each week. There is no deadline set for schools, for the hospitals, for the health teams. Um, we look at referrals every week. Um, and again, the single point of access, the new referral system means that one referral in from a school or education setting means that access can be given to all of the services suitable to the needs of the children, child or young person being referred. If a referral is accepted, this is the third question, when would support from our service start? The service starts to work with a child or young person or a school very quickly. The school is given a response within a working week of whether the referral has been accepted or not. And then the service will start support very quickly. Sometimes referrals aren't accepted if they don't meet the criteria for the service. But on each of those occasions, the school or the education setting that made the referral will receive a phone call um, with or a team's call with one of our specialist teachers to signpost to the support that they do need and to offer some advice and guidance. Can the services offer support and advice to families? Yes, we can, and we do that in different ways. Our contact details are available on the local offer. We encourage, as I've said, families and parents and carers to be involved in the inclusion plans um, and the review of how our service is working with a child or young person in the setting. And we do regular updates with our colleagues in Sendias to provide um, information and advice to families that way. Those are virtual events through Teams Send us host to those events and we welcome all families joining us. Do these services only work with schools in Suffolk? Yes, we do work with schools and education um, settings in Suffolk. However, if a child or young person has an, an education health care needs plan from Suffolk, then that setting, even if that setting is outside of Suffolk, can access our services. So we only work with schools and settings in Suffolk. However, if a child or young person has a Suffolk EHCP, then we can provide support, even if that child or young person lives outside of Suffolk. Is there a cost to schools for these services? Everything you've heard from me today is part of what we call our core offer. The referrals into our services are part of that core offer that means they are free at the point of delivery and there is no cost to schools or settings. However, there is also a traded offer from across our services, and that is to provide some whole school training um, or some individual training to schools bespoke to their needs. However, if a child or young person meets the threshold for our service, then they access that service free of charge. The traded element comes from the extra additional elements of our service, which is usually training, for which sometimes there is a cost to schools and settings. Does a child or young person need an AHCP to access these services? The answer is no, they don't, or a diagnosis. We work on a needs-led basis do the services work with special schools and or PRUs? Many of our services already work with our special schools and our PRUs. From September, all of our services will be working with our colleagues in special schools and with our PRUs to broaden our offer across all education settings. And that includes our post-16 settings. We are therefore working towards a zero to 25 offer across all education settings. But please don't forget that many of our services already work from birth to 25 and with all settings. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. If you do have any questions, 
we can be contacted through the contact details available on the local offer pages. Please do join us at our sessions with Sendias. They will be advertised through Sendias um, and we look forward to working with you and answering any further questions that you have going forward. Bye bye.